this will be our third um, video on quantum physics, the introduction to quantum physics, the basics of quantum physics for AP Physics 2 class. And I'm going to start with electron shells and energy levels. So in quantum mechanics, the energy of a confined system can take um, only uh, certain quantized values. An atom, um, the nucleus and the electrons together is a quantum system that follows uh, this rule. Um, the energy levels are discrete due to the nature of the quantum mechanics. So for a given atom, there are only specific allowed energies or energy values that an electron can have. And the different atoms have different energy uh, states. I mentioned earlier in my videos um, that Albert Einstein and other scientists in late 1800s, uh, early 1900s, uh, discovered that atomic energy levels are quantized and these energy levels are energy values that an electron in an atom can have or occupy. So the lowest energy state or energy level is called the ground state. And since the electrons are attracted to the positively charged protons in the nucleus, they will generally fill out the lower energy levels first. And excited states occur when the lower energy electrons move to the higher energy states, leaving empty slots open in lower energy states. And quantum mechanics describes the quantized or discrete nature of these levels and different energy levels. So Bohr's model, atomic model, um, the one that looks like uh, we used to look at, um, like if there is the star and the planets around, so that would be the Bohr's model, was an extension of Rutherford's model, uh, which treated atoms like planetary systems. So Rutherford's model um, had a key flaw. And that flaw was in electrons having electric charges which means when they um, move around the or like in their orbits, uh, orbits of the nucleus, they radiate the energy. So losing this energy um, in a way would cause them to fall into the nucleus and make it impossible for the atom to be stable. So Bohr's model was uh, modified and um, certain three criteria were stated for the for the atoms. So electrons are able to move in certain discrete stable orbits without radiating energy and orbits uh, have angular momentum or values that are um, integer multiples of the reduced Planck's constant. So it can be the number, the specific number of the Planck's constant. And then the electrons can only gain or lose a very specific amount of energies when they're jumping from one orbit to another in discrete steps. So by observing or emitting uh, radiation in terms of the photons, an electron can jump from one state to another up when it's observing the photon and down when it's emitting the photon. So the model um, provides a good first order approximation of the energy levels for a simple atom such as hydrogen atom. So the electron shell essentially represent the energy level corresponding to a pr uh, principal quantum number n. And shells have different uh, subtypes. The number of uh, subshells is like n. So where the different kind of subshells are called s orbits, p orbitals, or d orbitals, and f orbitals. And each orbital can contain at most two electrons. So each with opposite electron spin. So um, if, you, if the orbital like uh, S shell has one electron, it has a certain spin. But the orbital P and the second orbital S, when they have two electrons, they would have electrons with different um, direction spins. For example, like if, if N is equal to three, then shell has three, three subshells. And these are called 3s, 3p, and 3d. Like you see this in, in this picture, when n is equal to 3, you have 3s, 3p, and 3d. And the 3s subshell has one orbital containing two electrons. So the 3p subshell has three orbitals and containing six 
of total electrons. The 3D subshell has five orbitals containing 10 total electrons and N3 shell I mean the whole shell will contain the total of um, 18 electrons in nine orbitals being three subshells. So you have three subshells. Each subshell has different orbitals and those orbitals have each two electrons. So all together makes 18 total electrons. So the general rule is that the shell can hold up to two, two, let me see, two, and then you have n to the power of two electrons. In AP Physics 2, you don't have to know the, all the specific details. It's more like AP Chemistry class that you would have to learn all about the orbitals. So I only have to give you like the basics, basics, because we're going to be using, and I want you to understand what's happening to the orbitals. All you have to know when electron jumps from one um, excited level to another excited level, it, um, when it obtains the uh, photon, it ab absorbs photon. Um, it will have to have, it has to be specific um, energy photon to, in order to be able to jump from one level to another. So um, it's good to know about these shells and you will learn them in AP Physics, oh, in uh, AP Chemistry classroom, but you don't have to know for AP Physics these details. Um, so what you do need to know is that the electrons can move up and down in energy levels by observing or emitting the photon of a very specific wavelength. And as a result, atoms of different um, elements can be identified by distinct absorption or emission of the spectrum. So absorption spectrum um, are obtained by bombarding an element with light of many wavelengths and detecting which wavelengths are absorbed. And emission spectra are obtained by heating the element to um, to force the electrons into excited states and then detecting which wavelengths of the light are emitted as the electrons jump back to down to the lower energy states. And this spectra will often be the inverse of each other. So to find the wavelength of a frequency of a photon emitted or absorbed through an electron energy level transmission, First, uh, we need to calculate the difference in energy between the two energy levels. And for that one, we're going to use the formula where you have the change of the energy. So you have the change of the energy between two uh, levels, energy levels equals two. So you have negative and that's 13.6. And that's the energy levels in um, electron volts for the ground level for the hydrogen atom. And then you have one over n um, of the final state squared minus 1 over n of the initial state squared. And then if the energy difference, can, the energy difference can also be found or used in the equation of the photon energy. So you can also say that the change of this energy is equal to um, h times the frequency, that's the frequency that the photon is um, being observed, and also can be replaced the frequency with um, speed light over the wavelength. So you have the Planck's constant C over the wavelength. And what's good to know is in order for an electron to jump from the ground state to the next state, you have to have a certain amount of energy. So you can have a photon coming and bombarding the electron, but if this photon does not carry specific energy needed for the electron in that atom to jump to a higher excited level, then the, uh, the electron is going to stay in the state where it is. It cannot be, it cannot have enough energy to jump from one level to another. So each level will have a certain amount of energy needed to jump to the next level and so on. It doesn't depend on how much intensity of the light is coming. You can have a lot of, um, let's say, red light with a lower frequency coming and bombarding the electrons, but it doesn't have enough energy and then you can have an ultraviolet light or violet light that has higher frequency and that one may carry ex ex um, enough energy to to carry the electron from one uh, level energy to the other we're going to continue a few more questions solving here in this um the rest of the video so since i i will cover a little bit of theory or conceptual part in every video slowly building your knowledge before we solve questions 
And when, um, when we solve the questions, we're going to apply the knowledge that we learned. So here, find the de Broglie's wavelength of the photon, and they give you the mass of the proton. Uh, so de Broglie wavelength of the proton, and they give you the mass of the proton moving at the speed. So I'm going to figure out how much energy a proton has. So by looking at the equation that we saw earlier, um, that it is the energy of the the rest energy of the uh, particle that has a mass is mc squared. And here we saw that you can replace it with momentum times uh, the speed of light. So the momentum is mass times velocity, and then I have the speed of light. So if I plug in these numbers, I have the mass 1.67, 10 to the negative 27, times the velocity of that proton, which is 10 to the 7, and then times the speed of light, which is 310 to the 8. And um, they ask me the wavelength. So energy is also equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency. So I can replace the Planck constant because there is no electron volt on this side. I cannot plug in electron volts for my Planck's constant. I have to plug in joules times seconds. So I have 663. 10 to the negative 31st, 34, negative 34th. And then I have, instead of the frequency, I have the speed of light over the wavelength, and I'm looking for the wavelength. So um, here I'm going to replace C with 3, 10 to the 8, and equals to 1, 67, 10 to the, I'm going to combine these two so that gives me negative 20, and then I have 3, 10 to the 8. And I see that I can cancel 3 to the 8 on both sides. So the wavelength is going to be equal to 663, 10 to the negative 34, divided by 167, 10 to the negative 20. And that is equal to, I get 3.97, 10 to the negative 14, uh, meters, or I can write 39.7 femta, 10 to the negative 15 meters. In this next question, they say the work function, uh, the, the energy needed to pull out electron from the surface, um, and in this case, it is aluminum. The, the work function is equal to 4.08 electron volts. And what is the threshold frequency required to produce photoelectrons from uh, produce photoelectrons from the aluminum? So when they say threshold frequency, it's the frequency needed by the photon to pull out the electrons from the surface of the aluminum. So the um, the energy that is needed, the photon energy, would be equals to the Planck's constant times its frequency. And they ask you for the frequency. So this is the cutoff frequency. And that one is equal to, in this case, the minimum that is needed. So that's the minimum energy of the photon, just pull out the electrons, equals to 4.08 electron volts. And because they use electron volts for the energy, I can write my uh, Planck's constant in electron volts as well. So I'm going to have um, 414. 10 to the negative 15 and then I'm looking for the uh, frequency the threshold frequency or the cutoff frequency so that frequency is going to be equal to 408 divided by 414 10 to the negative 15 and that gives me the frequency of uh, close to 1, 10 to the 15 hertz. I round it a tiny bit. For the next part, they say classify the electromagnetic radiation that is uh, that can produce this uh, photo uh, photoelectrons. So you cannot do this unless you see a table. And here looking at this chart, we can see that uh, 10 to the 15 falls between like here somewhere and so it falls somewhere in between which is um, ultraviolet light so i can specify that this light is somewhere um, in uv range
And then for the next one, they say if light of frequency f equals to 410 to the 15 hertz is used to illuminate a piece of aluminum, what is the maximum kinetic energy that the, um, that the um, ejected photons will have? The work energy for aluminum is, I'm looking at the table, so the work energy for aluminum would be 408 electron volts. You would have to check this um, in your book. They usually give you the table for work energy for different uh, materials. And they give you the frequency of the light that is coming so I can find out how much energy the photons have. So that's Planck's constant and times the frequency. Because my work energy is given to in electron volts, I can plug in electron volts for Planck's constant, so 414, uh, 10 to the negative 15, and times 4, 10 to the 15. So that will give me um, 1656 electron volts. So I have the energy that is going to be spent by the energy that is coming from the photon so that the incoming photons have this energy and this much has to be spent to pull out the electrons from the um from the aluminum so the kinetic energy is going to be the difference of those so the maximum kinetic energy is the energy that the photons were carrying 16.56 minus the energy that is going to be used to pull out the electrons and then wherever energy is left is going to be the maximum kinetic energy and in this case it is 12.48 electron volts in the next part they ask you what is the maximum speed of the photoelectrons so because we have the mass and these are the photoelectrons or electrons we can use the kinetic energy formula which is one half mv squared and equals two and we just found what that number is but we have to convert it into joules because the formula is related to the joules um, so we have 1248 and instead of the electron i have 1.6 10 to the negative 19 so that gives me joules instead of electron volts and um, the velocity is going to be equal to the square root of two times the energy which is two times 1248 times 1.6 10 to the negative 19 and all of that divide by the mass of the electron which is 9 11 10 to the negative 31st and that will be equal to 438 times 10 to the 12 and when I take the square root of that number I get 2.1 10 to the 6 meters per second so that would be the velocity of those photoelectrons and for the last part they ask you if the light described in part b were increased by a factor of 2 in intensity what would happen to the kinetic energy of the uh, for the electrons emitted from the surface of the aluminum and because intensity cannot give the amount of the increase the kinetic energy of the aluminum uh, so what you have is um, you have energy of the photons so that's the energy of the photon this energy is going to be spent on a uh, work function to pull out the electrons so some of this energy is going to be lost and then the rest of the energy uh, is going to be emitting those electrons with some energy that is left so just because you have many more electrons are coming uh, you will have more electrons many more photons are coming, intensity increases. You will have more electrons pull off the surface of the aluminum, but they all will have the same electron energy. That means they will all have um, the same uh, velocity. So their velocity or kinetic energy will not increase just because intensity got increased. 
For the next question, they give you five energy levels of an atom and they show you the energy levels, so negative 62, negative 15, electron volts, negative 7, negative 4, negative 3, and the ground level is 1, and then you have 2, 3, and 4, and, one, and 5. And then if the atom begins in the uh, end 3 level, so level energy is 3, um, what photon energies could be emitted? as it returns to its ground level ground level which is one if the electron starts at the level three the electron could get back to the ground level by jumping this way and emitting some energy and then jumping one more time and emitting some energy or jumping straight down and emitting different energy so if um, let me call this energy one, this energy two, and this energy three. So energy one would be the difference between those, um, the second and the third level, which is um, eight electron volts. And then energy two is the difference between the second and the first level, uh, which gives you 47 electron volts. Or it could jump right straight from third to the first, and that gives you energy three, the difference between the third and the and the first, and that will give you fifty-five electron volts. And then for the second part for B, they're asking what could happen if this atom while in and um, undetermined ground undetermined or the ground level energy state were bombarded with a photon energy of 10 electron volts so if i look at energy that is coming of 10 electron volts to the ground level i see that in order to get from this ground level to the second 10 electron volts is not enough to get from here to here 10 electron volts is not enough to it doesn't matter that uh, the photon coming with the energy of 10 electron volts that 10 electron volts is like steps the first ground level the second the third the fourth and the fifth um, so if the electron is here and 10 electron volts are coming it may, may not have enough energy or it does not have enough energy based on the um, energy level that are given to jump to the higher level so nothing will happen for the next question they say how much energy must the ground state electron in a hydrogen atom observe to be excited to the uh, and for the level energy so the fourth level energy um, the ground state energy is equal to negative 13.6 electron volts for the hydrogen atom um, so if I want to calculate how much energy is needed to go from the ground level to the fourth level, they don't give me how much fourth level will have. So at first I have to find out how much the fourth level is going to have. So the um, energy formula for the fourth level is equal to negative 13.6, the ground level, times 1 over n um, squared so you have 13.6 times 1 to the 4 squared so the fourth level is going to be equal to negative 0.85 electron volts mm -hmm. and using this same formula you can find the um, energy levels for each level so you could say e 2 is equal to negative 13.6 times 1 over 2 squared using the same formula and that will give you um, the second one is negative 3.4 um, electron volts the third energy level is going to be equal to um, using the same formula I will get negative 1.51 electron volts and then the fifth one is going to be equal to uh, negative 0.544 electron volts so this would be all the energy levels for every single one of the um, ones that are given for hydrogen atom and then 
for the next question, they say um, when the electron is in fourth level of the segment, what wavelengths are possible for the photon emitted um, when the electron drops from the lower energy level? Um, in what regions electromagnetic spectrum would that happen? So if you jump from the um, from the fourth to the third, so from the fourth to the third, you would emit the energy, the difference between the fourth and the third. So between the fourth and the third, the energy level would be the difference between those. So I get point sixty six. So this one is going to be point. 66 electron volts the difference between um, 0.8 and 1.5 the electron could also jump from the fourth level to the second level so the energy difference would be between the fourth and the second it's the difference between the fourth and the second so that's um, 0.85 minus negative 4.3 and that will give me 255 electron volts and the last choice we can have is from the fourth all the way to the ground level so that's going to be the energy difference between the fourth and the first one which is uh, negative 0.85 minus um, 13.6 so that will give me 12.8 electron volts. And they ask you um, the wavelengths of each. So I'm going to just show you the last one, and you have to do it for every single one of them. So if I needed to find out the wavelength that was emitted, so right here, you would have the wavelength emitted from the electron when it jumps from the excited state to uh, to the ground state and that wavelength i can use by using the formula uh, the Planck's constant and instead of the frequency i have the speed of light over the wavelength so the wavelength would be equal to the Planck's constant times the speed of light over the change of the energy uh, for between fourth and the first level so now if I plug in the numbers I have the wavelength emitted between the fourth and the first um, energy levels is equal to and um, the energy I have here is in electron volts so I can plug in my number for Planck's constant in electron volts I have four, 14 10 to the negative 15 times 3 10 to the 8 and divide by the energy that is emitted, which is 12.8 electron volts. So that will give me 97 nanometers. I am running out of time in this video to find the energies emitted or the wavelengths emitted for the other ones, but you can check um, your answers. So this one will be 1.9 or 1,910 nanometers so you would have to use between the fourth and the third one energy levels the same formula and this one would be 400 um, 487 nanometers and then the last one we just found out is 97 nanometers so they each one give you uh, different wavelengths and i'm gonna stop um this video i'm going to continue more practice in the next one so that was the end of our third video on um, the basics of quantum physics for ap physics 2 class thank you for watching and um and listening to all my conceptual part um, i'm glad we got through some questions to solve problems in this video and i'll see you in the next one